What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome to the Keep It Techie channel. And today we're diving into a crucial aspect of server management and that's firewall control using UFW, which stands for uncomplicated firewall. So whether you're new to setting up your first server or a seasoned pro looking to refine your skills, understanding firewall management is critical for ensuring the security of your network. So buckle up, grab your notes, and let's get your server's defenses up to snuff with some straightforward firewall rules. All right, so the backbone of managing network traffic in Linux is the NetFilter subsystem, which is powerful but complex. And most firewall configurations on Linux, including Ubuntu, leverage this system. However, dealing directly with NetFilter through IP tables can be overwhelming due to its complexity. So enter UFW, and that's Ubuntu's uncomplicated firewall. And it's designed to simplify the process of configuring IP tables. And today I want to explore how to enable UFW, manage rules effectively and secure your server by only allowing the traffic you permit. And this overview will set the foundation for a safer, more controlled network environment. So let's make firewall management approachable and straightforward. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. All right, so I'm connected to my virtual machine. This is Ubuntu 24.04. And this is that same server we used in our SSH video, just showing you guys how to set up an SSH server. So all that's configured. And now let's get to the firewall. So the first thing I'm gonna do is log into it. My user account is Josh and just type in whatever password you got and you get to go. And so you're logged into the system. Now let's see you have done the action with some real world examples that you might encounter in your daily server management tasks. Now, first off, let me go down and run one command and I'll talk about it after that. So let's type sudo UFW and then status. Press enter and type in our sudo password. And what I wanted to explain to you guys is UFW by default is turned off to avoid blocking any of your initial server setup traffic. And so there are a couple commands that allow you to enable it. And since we're connected directly to the server, this is all on the virtual machine and I'm using VNC or no VNC to actually connect to the server. I don't have to worry about SSH going crazy on me. So we can go on and enable it right fast. So let's type sudo UFW and then enable. This is the command to enable UFW. This will enable the firewall on your system. And I wanted to point out, like I said, we're not connected via SSH, but if you're connected via SSH and you run this command first, you're going to lose connection to your server. And I'll show you guys that once we enable it. So let's go on in and enable the firewall. Cool. And that's pretty much it. And it'll give you a message here that says firewall is active and enabled on system startup. So what that means is that anytime you reboot the server from here on out, it will start the UFW service or the firewall service on the system. And that's blocking all our ports. And let's go down and check out our server just to verify that the firewall is working. I just want to find out what the IP address is again. I can't remember what it is. It's 212. So switch over to our terminal and then let's just try to SSH into this server. So 192.168.10.212 and press enter. And as you can see, it's being blocked. And you probably it probably say it'll just fail the connection. Can't connect to this server or can't find the server. That's a good indicator that the firewall is working. But that's not what we want. We want to be able to connect to this server via SSH. So let's switch back over here to our virtual machine and let's go down and clear the screen. But one thing I want to show you guys is the status command again. So UFW status 
and press enter and that'll you know let us know that it's active and running so we get to go now let's go down and allow access from port 22 which is open ssh that's the default port that's the port that we want the server to listen on as well so in order to connect to it via ssh we need to have that port open so let's go down and add that and a simple command is basically sudo ufw allow and then we can specify the port directly and i'll cover another way to actually do this a little later on and that's using profiles but just starting out i wanted to show you guys the port directly so you just open up this one port so let's press enter here and it will say rule edits and let's check our status again i believe it should list out the ports that we have open yeah there we go so you can see we have those ports open and what it'll do when you add just the port it'll specify ip version 4 as well as ip version 6 so it allows both through the firewall so let's switch back over to our terminal again as you can see yeah it timed out uh connection refused or connection timed out so let's try it now this should allow us to connect right away yep and there we go so all we have to do is type in our password and we can log into the server no problem so we're good to go and i'll exit out right fast because we don't need to be connected to it anymore but we verified that our port is working so that's good to go so let's switch back over to our virtual machine and let's say we want to deny the traffic or block the traffic for port 22 let me show you guys that right fast so right now we have you know port 22 is being allowed well it's basically the opposite of allow which is deny so simply all you have to do is type sudo ufw deny and then port 22 press enter that'll update that rule for us and then we can check the status and you'll see that it'll deny that port 22 so and now if we go back over here to our terminal just show you guys again we can try again and it'll basically fail on us again basically saying connection timed out because it's trying 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 but it can't access that port so therefore it will fail now let's go on switch back over and go down and allow it again because i like it to be allowed you want this allowed especially if you're using like a cloud server you want to make sure you do not block port 22 because a lot of times that's the only way you can access the server if you close that port you know what i'm saying you won't have access to your cloud server and you might end up having to connect directly from the cloud manager the back end which is fine and you can make those changes there but let's say you don't have access to that server let's say it's a server that you set up i don't know at your parents house or something and they don't obviously know how to use it you know what i'm saying if you close out port 22 on accident you won't be able to access that server unless you're physically there to make those changes and let me switch back over to the terminal because it only took a couple seconds but once i open that rule back up where i open that it automatically popped up basically saying found the server and is allowing us to log into it so we could type in our password log into it again good to go so boom all right so let's switch back to our virtual machine and i want to go down and step it up a notch a little bit you know what i'm saying so and let me show you guys how to do a little bit more specific rules like for instance let's say you only want one computer to have access to port 22 on the server you can get very specific specific with the rules that you set up so like for instance we can run and actually let me go back over to my terminal just to find out what my ip address is for this system because i do not remember what it is so one two four okay one two four and let's switch back over to virtual machine and what we want to do is specify that we only want access from that one computer to the server via ssh and so all you have to do is type sudo ufw allow from and then we can type in that ip address so 168.10.124 and then to any port 22. All right, cool. So let's go down and press enter and let's check out these rules all right fast. Let's go into our status. So yeah, we got the regular one there as well as, so it's really not gonna block, but you have to remove that first one. Uh, and I probably should have did that first. So let's delete allow to, let's run the status again. And right now, yeah, you'll see that allow from that IP address still there. So let's go down and switch back over to our main terminal for my main system and let's go down and log into the server again so boom as you can see we're good to go now in order for you guys to see this example i need to go down and switch over to another system that i have here i have another virtual machine running for dora and i'll just try to connect from there so let me exit out of this one and then let's switch over to our other virtual machine all right so like i said this is for dora and so let's go down and type in our or let's type in ssh and try to 
connect to this server right fast. So 68.10.212, press enter. And as you can see, it fails. So it's not gonna connect to it because this has a different IP address. Now, another thing you could do, let me go down and I'll just let that time out and switch back over to our virtual machine. And let's go down and clear so you guys can see a little better. And I'll run a status again so you guys can see what's currently there. And when it comes to these commands, like if you got them like very specific, it's a little hard to just delete them. Like to be honest, I don't even remember the full command in order to remove a lot of this stuff. So it could be like pseudo, I, no, I normally have to look it up, but let me show you guys what I do to make it simple. Let's say you want to delete this rule because I want to add another specific rule in here that'll open it up for all IPs on this network. So I was going to show you guys that next, but in order to remove that one, let's type pseudo UFW status and then numbered. So this is the easy way to get it off of there. So make sure you type numbered at the end and press enter and that'll number out each one of your rules that you have there. As you can see, this one has one, but if you have multiple rules here, you can get the number and you could delete based on the number, which is super cool. All you had to do is type pseudo UFW delete and then number one and press enter and i'll delete that rule for you on the system so that and then it spits out the rule that it actually deletes and then you can type y for yes that's the exact one you want to remove press enter boom and that rule is deleted now let me show you guys how to do it from let's say this whole network and that way our fedora system can actually connect via ssh as well so let's clear again because it's got that little box on the right but let me show you guys the command right fast so let's type sudo ufw allow and then from the exact same way but we need to we want to type the whole network in so 192.168.10.0 and then we need to put our subnet there or our cider so it's a 24 network to any port 22 and press enter and i'll add that rule to us in let me just show you what it looks like let's go back up here to the status boom you'll see it just basically says from anyone on this network can access port 22 for the server now this is good let's say you want to segment certain things off you got vlans or something like that and you only want to be able to access a particular server from a system that's within that vlan or that network that segmented network that you got out there but it's a good way of segmenting and things off or separating it out so let's switch back over to our fedora system yeah and as you can see it timed out so let's try it again now that we have that new rule in there and boom there we go it's gonna add our fingerprint just like i told you guys in the last video with the ssh it'll add the fingerprint on the system and then it'll, it'll allow you to log in from there so we're logging in using josh again press enter good to go so we're logged into our server from another system within that network and so if a system has a different ip address let's say it's on a different network or something it won't be able to access it based on that rule all right so let me show you guys something else right fast so sudo ufw and then app and then list and let's press enter and this is a good way of opening ports for particular services that you have on here anytime you install a new service it'll list it as an available application under ufw and this is just a simple way of adding an application and it will basically add those default ports for that application which open ssh is there that's the only one there that's the only service we have running on here so it's the only one list but let's go back into our status right fast one more time and remove that let's go to our numbered list and delete one boom yes um, and let's get back up to the top and sorry about that let's get back up to the top clear it and so the way to add it using one of those profiles let's go back to it right fast you have to type it the exact same way so sudo ufw app list press enter boom you have to type it in the exact same way that it's listed there and what i mean by it is the case so you can type sudo ufw allow and then open s S H and like I said, it has to be cap. So the O is capital and then the S S H is capital as well. So press enter and then so add that rule. And then you, instead of when you list it, it shows the port, it should show the application, but we already know what it is. It should say open SSH. I don't know if you guys remember, but it said 22, port 22. The default port for SSH is port 22. So it's gonna open up that rule. Now, if you have a custom port, like how I showed you guys, you can set in the configuration file, you can change the port for open SSH. Then you may have to go in and add those ports directly. So like I know people use port 222, 
or four twos you know what i'm saying or two four two four just some random port number that they sometimes use and that's just to kind of hide the port even though people can run scans and they can figure out what the port is using like some of those cali tools it's still a good idea or recommendation for you to change the port from port 22 that way that it take them a little bit longer to find or you put more steps into the process of them trying to brute force the system and so like i said as, as you add applications to the system you can run this sudo ufw app list and it'll list out those applications there like for instance once we install apache i'm gonna show you guys how to do a lamp stack in a later video you'll see apache and it will be like three different profiles for it, like Apache and then Apache Secure and then Apache Full. And they open up different ports depending on the profile. And I'll show you guys that in a, in a later video. Well, that wraps up my guide on managing your firewall using UFW on Ubuntu 24.04. And just to recap, you've seen how to enable UW, add basic rules, delete them, and even how to use application profiles for easier management. Now remember, a robustly configured firewall is your first line of defense against potential threats. So these tools and commands are vital for keeping your servers safe. If this video helped you, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the Keep Tech channel for more useful tech tips, and make sure you share these tutorials with your friends and possibly colleagues. And make sure you keep tuning in for more ways to tech up your life. And as always, keep it techie.